broadcasting from the Unshackled Studios in Melbourne. This is Wilms Front, brought to you by the Unshackled.net. Now here's Tim Wilms. Many Victorians after eight and a half weeks of this second lockdown don't know whether to laugh or cry. Definitely trying to laugh is, is a better coping mechanism than, uh, uh, than despair in these uh, dark and depressing times. That's why returning, my returning guest uh, to Wilms Front tonight is Lucky Lance Simon. Uh, who has been doing uh, with his Facebook lives and, and vlogs uh, during Melbourne's uh, second lockdown uh, his best to inject a bit of humour. For example, here was Lance's skit on the evening of last Wednesday after pregnant Ballarat uh, mother uh, Zoe Buller was uh, arrested for incitement. Promoting the protests, you're all under arrest. I have a search warrant. First thing I'm going to need you to do, give me all your mobile devices right now, place them into this evidence bag. All of your mobile devices in this evidence bag now, all of them. Read and sign that search warrant. Right now, you kids are all under arrest. You're going to jail. But you can't arrest us, we're just kids. We just arrested a pregnant woman. We arrest kids too. Put your hands behind your back now. <laughs> Lance, welcome back to the show. Hey guys, it's just me, Lance, again. Well, that's yeah, your new cat fr catchphrase. Every vlog, well, except for that one, which was more of a, a sketch, uh, you say, it's me, Lance, again. Yeah, that's, uh, that's just how I always do it and uh, become a catchphrase by yeah. accident. Uh, now, since I, I last spoke to you, which was on July 29th, that's when you first started going uh, viral, when you, you started visiting the, the various hospitals uh, around Melbourne. Uh, that was when Melbourne was during stage three lockdown to see how uh, overwhelmed they were. And they were, were, were pretty much empty. We're told that uh, we need to remain in this lockdown to stop hospitals being, being overwhelmed. Uh, but uh, that's not what you saw. Yeah, I just, um, well, I had a lot of nurses contact me. I've got some family members that are in the medical industry. And um, <clears throat> so I'm not saying that there's nothing happening, but uh, I just saw that the, from what the media were telling us, what's really happening at the hospitals, that was, you know, vastly different. So I just wanted to go and poke fun at that and point it out that they're not, it's not as busy as the media are making out. Not to say that there's not some pressures there. That we've got. Oh, you dropped out there for a moment. We'll get Lance back in a moment. I thought I'd go down there and poke fun at it and um, ended up driving to every hospital I could find. And um, I was pretty surprised. I'd never seen the hospitals that quiet, especially the, um, the Alfred on a weekend late at night would usually be packed in the emergency because... Uh, You've got Chapel Street nearby, so a lot of ODs and assault victims from the nightclubs. So usually, I don't, <laughs> I've been there myself, it'd usually be very busy and it was dead. And then I said in the comments, I do read the comments. People say they don't read the comments, but that's bullshit. We all read the comments. And uh, I've seen a lot of people saying that, you know, I'm, I'm telling lies and uh, being dishonest. And one of the things was that it was at night. And I was thinking, oh, gee, so yeah, I did go at night. But as far as I know, people go to hospital when they're sick and when they need to. They don't wait for business hours, as far as I know. So anyway, so I drove back another time during the day and it was even more quiet. And I filmed that and pointed that out at, uh, that they were just as quiet. So, uh, you know, so I just thought it was a bit dishonest to the media showing um, footage of busy hospitals, overrun hospitals. But if you actually drive there, You've never seen them so quiet in all your life. And I went to the testing center and all I saw was, you'll see in one, my, one of my videos. Yes. I just seen nurses sitting on the ground on their phones. You know, so um, to say they're overrun, I, I thought that's exaggerating. I'll go and point it out, have a bit of fun. 
Uh, now, uh, as I mentioned, uh, you've gained uh, a much more uh, substantial uh, following since we last spoke. Uh, I'm not saying that I had anything to do, to do with it. It was all uh, just your 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 humour uh, in your in your vlogs, and 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 also the fact that uh, you you upset and and triggered a lot of people. Now, a byproduct was that is that the the mainstream media has done a few uh, expose articles on yours and your your wife's uh, legal history which uh, we didn't go through since your last appearance so let's start with the uh, I remember you shared it uh, on your on your Facebook uh, page this uh, Daily Mail article and uh, you can tell me how how accurate it is and Daily Mail always goes with the most Daily Mail Australia most sensational headline inside the murky past of anti-mask crusader COVID idiot who thinks Bill Gates created the virus films bizarre videos to prove it doesn't exist once stabbed a man to death and has a glamorous gangland lawyer wife lucky Lance Simon is a prominent Melbourne coronavirus conspiracy monger he believes that Bill Gates created the coronavirus in a Wuhan lab to sell vaccines filmed himself looking for patients in hospital and down played COVID 18's dents he stabbed uh, Paul Thornell to death in 2011 but was found not guilty of murder uh, his wife is gang lawyer Zara Gard Wilson and his mates with Roberta Williams and it goes through the or well, at the time was a high uh, 627 new uh, COVID-19 cases. I think that was the, the high there. We were down, it was up today, 55. Uh, the lowest was yesterday, uh, 41. But yeah, I've just, I've just read the, uh, the, the, the sensational headline and their, and their, and their bylines. So. Um, I, um, I put, yeah, so I've seen that. Someone sent it to me on my, one of my Facebook friends. And just to just to show everyone that I'm not embarrassed by that story, I just posted it myself. So I see things like that, and I just post it myself, just to show people that um, nothing's going to bother me on the internet. Nothing's going to um, annoy me whatsoever. Negative negative aspects of being on the internet. It's uh, that's part of it. Doesn't bother me. And to show that, I just even post it myself. Uh, in terms of the accuracy. Um, Oh, well, it's unbelievably un inaccurate. And it, the funny thing is, um, in my videos, because I, I talk about the media being dishonest, and then so their response is to do a story that's in dishonest. <laughs> so it's pretty uh, pretty funny to me. And, um, what do you call it? Uh, what do you call it? The, uh, I'm not an anti-masker. I did do a video. I did, I did mention a few times that I'd, I'd read that the masks were ineffective. Mm. Right? So... Um, I, um, I did mention that, so then they gave me the anti-masker label. Um, I also, I, I remember when they become mandatory, I'd said something negative about it because I was a bit, I'd just seen it, read it in the paper or something, and I made a quick video, so let's boycott the masks. I was a bit, I was a bit upset when I first heard we were going to be, it was going to be mandatory. And um, like a lot of people, when you get a new, new law enforced on you, you know, to take you a minute to adjust. And you know, literally by the next day, I didn't care anymore. You know, I suppose I got used to it. Okay, it's not the end of the world. I'm trying to stay positive. It's not the end of the world. People wear masks on the building sites like that their whole life. You know, so it's not the end of the world. You know, um, it's definitely not the end of the world. But yeah, so I'm not an anti-masker, although I believe that they're ineffective. But I wear one myself. I go to Safeway. I go to the shops. So I wear one myself. Yeah, so, well, we, we see in your uh, vi uh, vlogs now that uh, when you're out in public, you've you've got the the, the mask on, but obviously you take it uh, uh, take it off when you're doing a, a live broadcast because that is allowed under the exemptions for not wearing a mask. That's why you don't see a a lot of the time the mainstream media reporters out in the field wearing masks uh, during their, their live crosses or Peter Mitchell or uh, Peter Hitchener uh, wearing masks while they're reading the news. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's, not, it's not that. I'm not worried about the fine. It's just I just um, I wear it when I go in the public because I don't want to get into a um, confrontation because I found some people get quite, a, uh, quite aggressive, quite aggressive when, um, what do you call it? If you're not wearing a mask, some of the public get very quite aggressive. So I don't want to get into, I don't want to get into a fist fight for not wearing a mask. So I, so I tend to tend to put it on. Um, last thing I want to do is get into a fist fight over over that. <laughs> 
And the, the Daily Mail article, it also, well, all of their articles have lots of, they include lots of photos. Most of them, they, they rip off uh, people's Facebook pages uh, because, well, yeah. the, the, the part of the uh, terms of use of Facebook is that everything's public. So what's this device you've got, you've got here uh, that looks like some sort of... Uh, some sort of cannon uh, where you've got the goggles on there and the vest. Yeah, that's uh, it's like an army barracks around there. It's all it's all legitimate. Mm. So that's some of the, uh, that's some of the, some of the uh, weapons that I use to hunt the trolls. You see, <laughs> yeah. I, I used that photo for uh, tonight's promo because I used your well, uh, one of your uh, gym shots. Uh, which is actually your uh, Lucky Lance profile picture, and I was accused of, of sexualizing you, so I decided to put this more modest photo f promoting tonight's show. Oh, thanks, mate. <laughs> thanks very much. There's you uh, and Zara there. Uh, that's you. Yeah, that's the video where I made where I was against the mask. I think I deleted it, but it got like thirty or 40,000 views, and uh, mm. so I, I probably shouldn't have said, I should have, shouldn't have said that one. And that's, yeah. yeah Murder, so, um, yeah, are you uh, act like are you legitimately mates with her? Is that a, a... yeah? I'll, I'll tell you that. I'm glad you asked. That's an interesting story. I'd, I'd never met her till till that we did that podcast last year, and I'd never met her. Only just like the rest of us, uh, seen her in the media. And if you've seen her in the media, you might think she was a negative, negative person. You know, bad person, whatever. And um, what do you call it? I uh, I got in contact with her to ask her to come on the podcast because there's. She's uh, pretty, um, pretty interesting, and um, it was only by chance. She'd actually rang the office phone and I'd answered it by accident, and she said, it's Roberta. I said, oh, Roberta Williams. She said, yeah, so I'd never met her, and um, what do you call it? We'd uh, uh, previously had a dispute over the phone like 10 years earlier, <laughs> over nothing, over nothing, and she wrote some negative things in a book about me. It was all a uh, bit of fun, but I'd actually never spoken to her at length or met her, and because um, she she rang, you know, looking for a lawyer, and I having to answer the phone, um, I said, "Oh, would you come on my podcast?" You know, because she's interesting. And she said, "Yeah, why not?" So she, I met her in the office, and, and we did the podcast. And uh, one of the staff helped me with the turning turning the computer on. And um, he watched the podcast, and then afterwards he said, "Geez, how long have you known her for?" I said, "Because we were talking for hours." And um, I said, oh, what do you mean? I've never met her. And he goes, geez, you were talking like you've known each other 10 years. So we just uh, we got along really well. And she's actually turns out to be she's really nice. And what I'd say to, to you, Tim, or anyone, maybe conservative people that maybe don't like her or don't, or whatever, they've seen something on the news, I'm pretty sure almost anyone who, if you actually met her, um, you would like her. You wouldn't be able to help but to like her. She's, a char she's charming. She's just the normal, she just seems like a normal lady. And she's got a really good sense of humor, as you'll see. You know, she's she let me do some videos with her. Yeah, so I like her. So I'm not ashamed to say I, she, I consider her a good friend now, and I'll stay in contact with her. And yeah, I like her. So um, some people won't like me saying that, but I'm, I'm not ashamed to say I met her last year and got to know her. And um, it's a good lesson for me not to judge what you see in the media. It's a good oh, uh, what you see on Underbelly. Well, I, I never watched Underbelly. Is a I was told it's uh, extremely inaccurate, so I didn't bother to watch it. But, uh, but uh, yes, yeah, you, I, you'd be right. Yeah, you'd be right. Uh, she doesn't sound anything. Well, there's two Roberta Williams in Underbelly. The first one was uh, Cat Stewart, and the second one was Holly Andrew. And they definitely uh, make her out to be much more of a uh, loudmouth bogan than she is in real life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, she is a loudmouth bogan. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've obviously seen her being interviewed and that, and it's clear that the fictional portrayal is much more exaggerated, is the word. Yeah, uh, yeah that's they always got to exaggerate, don't they? Mm. You know, they've got to exaggerate. Well, but, let's uh, uh, play your uh, sketch uh, with Roberta. Now, am I correct that this was actually filmed at the beginning of the pandemic? Uh, I can't remember, man. I've filmed that many videos. Okay. But I've, done, I've done a few with Roberta. Yeah. Well, people will know the, the context uh, when they when they see it and see the punchline at the end. Come on. 
Oh, you, Lance. I thought it was the police. Are you serious, mate, coming to my door like that? Yeah, Roberta, please, can you help me out? I'm fucking desperate. Man. Help you out? You help me out with the money that you owe me. I fucking swear I'll have it on Tuesday. But you keep saying that, Lance, so I keep giving you gear I, and you don't... I swear on my kids I'll have it on Tuesday, please. I'm hanging. I need it. I need it. Lance, I'm telling you now, please. mate, I don't give a fuck who your wife is. Whatever. Next time you're copping it, mate, if it's not Tuesday... You I'll have the money, it. I swear on my kids. Please help me, Roberta. I really need it. I'm, I'm hanging. you now, Lance. Oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> Which is that was the sort of joke at the, the the time that sort of is there is there going to be a uh, a, a illicit trade of of toilet paper? Now we've got plenty of it in the supermarket. Yeah, yeah, that was the story of the day. Um, the um, what do you call it? The toilet paper crisis. So made fun of it. And, uh, well, there was two run, obviously two runs of it in in Melbourne. Given that we've gone through uh, two waves, obviously the first one was the most insane one. But uh, no pun intended, there was a, a second run uh, just before the the second lockdown as well. Yeah, there was a couple of them. Hang on, I'm going to get my dogs. Can someone lock these dogs up? So I've got my dogs <laughs> running around. But, um, sorry about that. Uh, now, obviously, it was uh, true uh, the, what the Daily Mail reported that uh, you you were tried for for murder, but were found uh, not guilty of, of self defence. And obviously, a lot of people reading that uh, about you would find that uh, uh, qu uh, quite confronting. Well, it's confronting. It, de it depends on whether you believe in the justice system or not. So well, you, you you were found not guilty, so. Uh, so yeah. So the outcome of the verdict. So, do you believe in the in the system and the verdict? Or do you believe in the jury system, or if you don't, if you do, hang on. I just got to. Can you lock all the dogs up now in Mum's office? Mm. Um, what do you call it? If you believe in the, if you believe in, if you believe in the jury system, and the just you think the the courts get it right, then it's a non-event. Do you know what I mean? But obviously, the the Daily Mail with their their headline, they said uh, once stabbed a man to to death. That's what they include in the headline and with the detail later on. But they sort of say, but uh, you were high on drugs at the time, implying well, you're you're still uh, a low life in our our eyes. That's what sort of it's implying with that article. Yeah, yeah. well, that's fine. That's um, I mean, what can I say? It's not. I can't. Well, I don't know what I should say to that. I, I, don't, I don't think I should dignify it with a response, to be honest. Yep. Well, that's that, that's fair enough. But yeah, um, obviously, uh, Daily Mail, they just do do it in the most uh, sen sensational uh, way that they can. And they're, 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 they're not concerned too much with the... Uh, they'll tell majority of the truth, but not the whole truth. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. But but well, anyway, I'm not. I wasn't too worried because I spoke to a few. Uh, I spoke to a few people about it, and and because I didn't even know anything about that about that uh, paper. And apparently, it's a uh, it's 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 described as a tabloid, and it's not taken very seriously. So I was told I shouldn't be worried about the story, as it's a uh, it's a tabloid, and it's not taken seriously by anyone with any brains <laughs> well the 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 daily mail it's often uh, referred to as the the daily fail it's a free news website so uh, essentially the when so, when something is free it's not a very good quality and they have a uh, notorious if i'll use one of their words notorious reputation for ripping off other journalists works almost verbatim and uh, often it's it's content that's behind a paywall. So they might get a, a a report from, say, The Australian or The Herald Sun or The Age, which an investigative journalist has uh, spent days or maybe even weeks compiling, and it's behind a paywall because it's expensive to produce. The Daily Mail just rips that off and offers it for free, uh, sexes it up quite a bit, and then publishes it. Yeah, well, um, do they make money from that? What do they do it for? Oh, it's apparently one of the top 10 websites in Australia. I mean, yeah, they're, they're just copying uh, uh, copying other people's work. And as uh, obviously uh, to write that article uh, on you, it's it's all publicly accessible 
uh, information and they didn't reach out to you for, for, for comment that was sent to you. Uh, so obviously it's very inexpensive uh, journalism, if you can yep. call it that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that's... Um, well, I don't think it's that much worse than the mainstream, to be honest. I mean, if you've had any experience with them, with the mainstream, then you know they're not... They're just as bad, but they're just better at it. They're more clever, you know. They have, hold, the, hold the line there. He's going to take care of those those barking dogs. Yeah, sorry about that. Just tell him to be quiet. <laughs> and now that we've got that uh, uh, backstory uh, out of the way, let's go to, or as uh, described in my, my introduction, the, the roadmap out of lockdown. Now, it's, uh, there were several leaks uh, to the, the media the, the week before. Um, to, to me, the the, the five-step roadmap that was unveiled on Sunday, one for Melbourne Metro and one for uh, regional Victoria, they're actually worse than the draft, given that the the, the curfew is, is going to be until October 26, but it's going to be until 9pm, uh, which is, that that's, even at 9pm, that's still a, a very very early time to, to tell people to go inside and, and, and go to bed and will only move to limited indoor social interaction and hospitality on October 26 if the uh, daily average for 14 days is, and I don't even understand this either, five average daily cases or five mystery cases. Uh, but new cases are not always mystery cases. I found that so confusing. The whole thing's confusing. I mean, it doesn't, so much of it doesn't make any sense, you know, and um, so many experts with uh, conflicting opinions on what we should do and what works, you know, lots of doctors being censored from the internet, you know, so it's all a big circus, you know, and um, Dan's plan, you know, um, his methodical, well thought out plan with these experts giving him advice, I dare to say it's a fast. You know, but uh, how could he, you know, there's there's no right or wrong answers, you know, and I, I doubt Dan's got the right answers and he's, he's heavily invested in this. It's too late for him to turn around and admit that he's taken a wrong approach. It's too late for that. Oh, politicians, they're the most stubborn people on the planet. It takes a lot for them to admit that they were wrong. Oh, man, it, it, it's a big mistake as well because what they, what they don't realise is they don't ever admit when they've lied or admit when they made a mistake because it's political suicide and it's it's what they're taught. But no one's ever fucking tested that theory. Do you know what I mean? Because they might be surprised at how forgiving we are. They might be surprised the redemption he can have if, if he said, if he got up like a normal human, if he could speak even like, like the average Australian and say, hey guys, I, I fucked up the quarantine, but I'm trying to fix it now. You know what I mean? But he's never said anything even remotely close to what I just said. And that's words we can understand. Mm. Guys, I messed up the quarantine. But anyway, now I'm doing this and I'm trying to fix it. Like a layman's terms, like that. Oh, mate, the support you'd get if you spoke like that. But he, he, I doubt he's ever spoken like that in his life. But he, um, what do you call it? But then to look into the camera and blame us. Mm. You know what I mean? To look in the camera and say, this is your fault. Um, uh, how, how is that beneficial to him and his part? You know what I mean? So he's thinking that that is the best course of action is to not admit where he's gone wrong and look into the camera and blame us. Now his expert uh, you know, team behind him, you know, the culture of politics is that's the best avenue to go down. And saying, no, it's my fault and it's not your fault. Most of you did all the restrictions properly and it's actually my fault. That in a politician's mind is it's political suicide and would be stupid. Well, I say their whole theory is stupid. Do you know what I mean? It, it, <laughs> to not admit when you're wrong and you think that's in your best interest, it hasn't worked well. You know what I mean? Because what it, when he said that, when he blamed us for... Oh, you've dropped out again. Oh, we'll get him back in a moment. Yeah, we'll get him back in a moment. 
it's definitely not my end here. Uh, the YouTube says the connection is excellent. So I'll just wait for a minute. I'll remind everyone if you want. Yeah. And we lost you again for a moment. Yeah, the internet cut out. Yeah. It's working now. Yeah, I was, I, was, I was telling uh, my audience that there's nothing wrong on this end, it's your end. Oh, sorry. I need that 5G. I'm waiting for that 5G. Yeah, 5G. Uh, they're supposed to be, like, the theory goes that uh, this lockdown uh, extension is so they can roll out more uh, uh, 5G. I'm actually, I'm not sure what your views are on 5G, but I'm a supporter of it. Australia has third world internet qualities. People overseas are shocked at our slow uh, internet speeds and even the NBN's not that great. Yeah, I'm, I can't wait for faster internet. For my podcast and my videos, it be great. The internet way too slow. Well, I got an email from Telstra, uh, well, I think it was last week, that uh, more, more, more locations around Melbourne uh, were rolling out uh, five, uh, uh, 5G, well, more of Melbourne was, was covered. And even though it is, it's, it is a stronger signal, it can't travel as far. And so that's why they've got to build all these towers around so that the coverage, uh, there's no black spots as, as we've come to, to know them. Because if you've got, I think the, the new iPhone is going to be 5G capable. Uh, so you don't, uh, well, <laughs> When you're allowed to travel, uh, it doesn't uh, cut out if you're going to another place. Yeah, if we're allowed to travel. All right, let's hope there's no more uh, interruptions. Or, well, the old paranoid theory is it's that the authorities are interrupting the stream. <laughs> I haven't heard that one. Oh, uh, yeah, that. that's, a, that's, a, that's constant. A, a, j a joke uh, when we have technical issues here. I almost believe the... Um... I almost believe the government um, start these conspiracies, you know, because we've got so many conspiracy theories out there, and then anything that might be true, I think, gets lost. Put you can put it in the same boat as a conspiracy theorist. Not you might actually be telling the truth, you know. Well, was that the, the most uh, probably uh, weirdest uh, conspiracy theory about the the curfew uh, was that uh, at four a.m. in the morning, Dan Andrews was at. Melbourne Airport, uh, uh, greeting uh, Chinese officials getting off uh, planes uh, w w without a mask on. And that was one of your a, a vlogs. You went to Melbourne Airport to see if the, the Chinese were there. Every, I, must have got, I must have got two or 300 messages from people saying, Lance, what about the airport? What about the airport? And um, after a while, when people keep persisting, um, what do you call it? I'm like, all right, I better fucking do it. So I drove out to the airport, and it was just a ghost town. <laughs> I didn't see anything. I um, because they uh, yeah, it's because the Chinese they they all come in the middle of the night. They're all gone by five a.m. I was there. I was there for half the day looking for people, and uh, I was I, I drove around the back where the runway was. I seen some some workers doing some um, some sort of construction. I was seen uh, they're building a big um, they're building a big a solar solar panel farm there just right behind the airport i've seen that that's to power that's to power something for the town that was pretty good pretty cool but uh it was pretty scary when i was at the when i was at the uh at the front of the airport i was i, was, I noticed afp cars behind me and I, I got a bit nervous and then i had a, a few security guards yelling at me to stop filming that was a bit weird you know what i mean i was a little, a little bit nervous that was quite weird but i got a good video <laughs> i went home yeah, that was good. He was actually asked about this uh, theory by, by Gabriella Power uh, from Sky News a couple of weeks back, and he answered the question to her politely. He's like, last time I remember I was at Melbourne Airport was, well, the last in-person COAG, which was before the, uh, the, the, the lockdowns. So he said he'd have to... <laughs> He'd have to uh, che uh, check his diary to double check that was the uh, the last time. But I was glad that she asked because even though it is one of the more out there theories, you at least want it on the record that is that is that going on? Yeah, yeah, it's funny, man. It's fu it's pretty funny. Who who starts these theories? Where do they start from? 
Well, I have heard after curfew, uh, planes and helicopters uh, 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 above. I'm not sure if you have uh, uh, where you are, but I think that's where these theories began. Like, hang on, we've got a curfew. Uh, international travel is banned. So why are there helicopters and planes flying around? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I live near an airport. I live near an airport. I haven't heard any planes at all. I haven't noticed any. So, uh, what do you call it? I don't know. I don't know much about that. We'll have to wait and see. But uh, I certainly went to the airport and it was dead. <laughs> it was a ghost town. A ghost town. But I didn't go at night. No, I didn't go at night. And, uh, maybe I should drive there at night and have a squeeze. <laughs> uh, well. You'd be risking a, a lockdown fine, which uh, you did uh, get a get a lockdown uh, fine when you were uh, uh, doing a vlog one time. I might just uh, uh, play that play that here. Hey guys, it's me Lance yeah. again. I just want to let you guys know out there: don't breach the lockdown. It's a bad idea. You got to abide by the law. Respect the police. Respect the laws. They're put in place for a reason. So uh, I just wanted to give a demonstration. If you breach the lockdown, this is what's going to happen. You're going to get a huge fine. How much is the fine, officer? $1,652. So it's a huge fine. Can I show my view of the fine? See, guys, if you breach the lockdown, you're going to get a huge fine. Don't do it. Be smart. Respect the police. See, you guys. Uh, and you didn't, you uh, told people there to uh, obey the law. Uh, so you didn't uh, incite anyone to, to make the same mistake that you did. Yeah, oh, well, I was being nice because those police officers were really, they were really friendly. So I um, I didn't want to make fun of them. So I did a positive, positive post. They're they pretty friendly, real young cops. And uh, so I didn't want to be a smart ass to them. But uh, uh, I think I issued that fine on another person who was breaching the lockdown. So I, pa I paid it forward, actually. Sorry. Yeah, you did. Uh, I haven't got it, uh, 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 got it with me, but uh, you've you, you also uh, did a uh, did a sketch uh, where you were out uh, doing a citizens patrol after after lockdown in in Brighton. Yeah, I do a lot of them. Yeah, I do a lot of them because the police can't be everywhere, so it's up to some of us people to to help them out. Mm. Have you met uh, Karen from Brighton, or oh, which is not uh, uh, just a, a nickname? Her. Uh, uh, her real name is Jodie Corlow. Uh, have you come across her uh, out and about? I see a lot of Karens. Which Karen are you referring to? Uh, Karen from Brighton. She was the one at the tan who said that she got bored of walking the ta same places because she uh, she did all of Brighton. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, mm. no, I don't know. That's pretty funny. She did all of Brighton. Mm. Um, she started a hilarious uh, Instagram uh, now with, well, uh, some of the same humor that uh, you have. One of the most hilarious ones was, uh, because this is the thing, the, the humor gets us through this. She said the, uh, she, she took a photo of all the uh, cases of beer and said, these are the only cases uh, from Dan's that I want to know about. <laughs> And, oh, this is a good segue here. She did a good post uh, yesterday uh, talking about uh, being a good citizen and helping out with contact tracing. Tomorrow we get the equipment upgrade, pencils and paper. So excited with these marvels of modern technology we will be better than Queensland and New South Wales because, well, uh, uh, to, to use your crass uh, uh, language, uh, not only did uh, Dan uh, fuck up hotel quarantine, but uh, contact tracing has been... Uh, fucked up where it's been revealed that they're using sticky posted notes for contact tracing and even using fax machines uh, to from the the GPS uh, to the uh, the contact tracers and they've only just a a, a got a well a granted a tender for a software contact tracing uh, team and this is I guess why Dan Andrews with his roadmap has basically gone for an elimination strategy because well he's, he's contact tracing uh, as as demonstrated by this uh, second wave is is basically using well 1930s technology mate there's, we, we could pull we could sit here all night pulling holes in, in so many things that are going on with the government you know and uh, a lot of people are doing that already 
Um, you know, you see Sky News are doing a great job and you know, many, many other people like ourselves. And it, what, what does it achieve? You know, we're divided. You know, we've got, you got, you got skeptics, you got fanatics, and um, we're all divided. And um, so much different sources of information available, and people, people talking about sites. Because I, 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 I often, um, what do you call it? Will change my narrative. And I've seen the comments, of people saying, "Oh, whose side are you on? Whose side are you on?" And I'm like, "I'm not on anyone's fucking side. I'm on the side of the truth." Mm. But. Um, you know, um, but I think it's important that, you know, we can have an exchange of ideas. We can disagree, all of us, you know, because we're very divided, the country, I think, at the moment, or Melbourne. We're very divided. People that think they stand by Dan or people think Dan's the devil. And um, But I think we can have a difference of, of opinion and um, exchange of ideas, but all still keep it civilised. We don't all have to hate each other. We don't have to pick sides. We can have a difference of opinion and we're still all Melburnians. You know, so so I don't like this. You know, whose side are we on? But um, look, but you know, with so much information, somebody's lying. You know, someone's bloody lying. And how are us lay people meant to figure out who's lying to us? You know, so we might as well not bother. I mean, I mean, if you watch the mainstream and the, and Sky News, they're both saying the complete opposite of each other. Now, how are us lay people meant to know who's telling the truth? Mm. You know, someone's bloody lying. Um, you know, um, you know, the chief medical officer. Uh, I don't know if that guy's lying or if he's mistaken or what, but his advice goes against so many world-leading doctors on the internet. And if you share their videos, it gets taken down. So I don't know what the hell's going on, but there's a lot of a lot of weird things happening. I'll, I'll, I will say that. But I think we should all stick together. There's no point of us all being divided and and, and fighting in the street. I've had a lot of negativity from people on the street. Um, you know, especially if I forget to put a mask on, I get negative people. Mm. At um, what do you call? It? I think we should uh, take a step back and a deep breath and all stick together. I think one way or another we're gonna this is gonna blow over. I, I believe. Yeah, I, I certainly don't like. Uh, obviously, uh, a lot of us were disappointed with Dan's uh, roadmap out, but uh, you, you mentioned Sky News there and the, the Liberal MPs uh, saying that this means indefinite lockdowns. We're going to be in lockdown for another. Uh, six months and if you're constantly reading that it really uh, depresses you because there is a a path out it's it's obviously it seems so far out of sight at the moment but what we're, we're down to around about 50 cases now we'll see what tomorrow brings but remember what it was like when we were up to nearly 700 cases a day we just and people were talking about uh, there was going to be stage five uh there, there were all these memes going around oh what, what's going to be the the next stages and that but we're not there now it's the the curve is now down by well nine it's now tenth of was what it was I don't know, man. I don't really. I don't want to. I don't want to dare get into the specifics with you. You know. It's, oh, uh, I'm just sort of. Uh, I'm trying to sort of look on the bright side. <laughs> there's a lot to be. There's a lot to be thankful for, but you know, we have had. We have lost some freedoms, right? And um, and some people are going to find that hard to adjust to. Some people are going to be paranoid. Some people. Are con some people are conspiracy theorists, and it's a good time to be a conspiracy theorist. There's so much conflicting information out there. You know, so, you know, like you see Chief Wiggum standing there insulting people, you know, insulting people that are, that are worried and emotional and talking about mm. a protest, protesting and to sit there and insult them, personally insult them, you know, uh, um, I think that's horrible, disgusting behaviour. That's his people. That's his people and they're emotional and they're freaking out or whatever for a bloody good reason. And to stand there and, and insult them and call them names on TV... I don't see what that achieves. I think it's petty. I think somebody like himself, a position of power, should should be professional. Shouldn't be acting like a child. And um, I see that he backpedaled a few days later. He backpedaled a bit and, and, and said maybe he used the wrong terms. And then he went straight on to go back to insulting them. And uh, who's to say he's right and they're wrong anyway? Do you know what I mean? Who's to say there isn't? They aren't. The conspiracy theorists aren't half right. There's a lot of dodgy things going on. And people are confused and emotional. So I think um, for the chief of police to stand there and insult everyone, I think that was horrible. I think he shouldn't, shouldn't have done that. I think he would have been better to say, 
kind words. Like, hey, I understand you guys are worried for a very good reason, but you know, now's not the time to protest, please don't do it. You know, maybe some words of, um, of, of uh, wisdom, some words of compassion would have been nice, would have been nice, but instead he just stood there like a big fat slob and insulted everyone. You know and, I mean? and his demeanor uh, as well, where he sort of, you know, broke out into sort of, what, well, miniature laughter, uh, that definitely rubbed people up the wrong way. It should rub everybody up the wrong way, that somebody in a position of power who's uh, is in the public eye and has a has a voice acts in that acts like that acts in such an immature stupid way you know mm. and um, it just seems like we've had a, a a stupid aussie bogan from the pub become the assistant commissioner somehow you know what i mean it's just stupid and, uh, it's a petty man a petty man and he's not an expert and and he and he doesn't have a clue what he's talking about in terms of the the virus and whether it is contagious and the numbers and all of the things that go on with that that's got nothing to do with him you know what i mean he's in, no. in so for him to comment yeah. on that, calling them tinfoil hat, where he doesn't have a clue about that. His job, his profession is enforcement, law enforcement. If you're just following orders, then just talk about how you're going to follow orders. Don't don't cast uh, moral judgment. And when he talked about uh, 5G conspiracy theories, where you and I have, have said we support 5G, but what's a, a 5G conspiracy has got to do uh, with enforcing the, the lockdown rules and making sure uh, a protest doesn't happen good point tim now that's that's a really good point tim yeah his job is law enforcement he, he's not his job is not to be a commentator and sit there and commentate on on these sort of matters we don't he, we don't pay him for that it's not his role it's not necessary it's it, it's mm. um inappropriate you know so i don't know why he's playing these childish games we don't need him to tell us any of that we just need him to do his job and enforce the law his personal opinion He's not required. His personal opinion is not warranted. His personal opinion, it it has no base. It has no um. It has no place. You know what I mean? His personal opinion on these matters or these people, tinfoil hat wearing brigade, is irrelevant. Is irrelevant. It's got nothing to do with his job. You know what I mean? So we don't want to. We don't pay him for his personal opinions and insults. And um, he's a disgrace. You know, he's a disgrace acting that way. Insult. That's it. the people that he's insulting. They're his people. You know, we're all the same. They're his people, and he's standing there insulting him. I don't think it's his place to do that. You know, uh, I did have a, a police officer pull me over, give me a give me a lockdown fine a few months ago, and she was standing there screaming and yelling at me, and uh, accused me of putting lives in, in in danger. Mind you, I was the only car on the road. Right, there's no cars on the road. I was the only car on the road. I was going to the service station, and she's screaming at me that I'm putting my lives in putting lives in danger. And I was like, putting lives in danger. I tried. I started filming. I tried to get her to say it again on the on the camera, but she wouldn't. But uh, I was thinking to to stand there and scream at me and accuse me of putting lives in danger, driving around at night by myself, by myself with no one on the road, and and to to say I'm putting lives in danger, accuse me of that, uh, and to get to to yell at me. That is just so in, it's so unprofessional. I could see her partner was embarrassed. I could see her partner was really embarrassed um, by that, and I just thought. It's none of your business. Just your, do your job. Give me the fine. I don't. You, you're not. I don't pay you for your personal opinion. Do you know what I mean? And if you do want to give your personal opinion, it's absolutely stupid. What an idiotic thing to say that me driving it around at night by myself to the service station and back is putting lives at danger. It's the most absurd, ridiculous, stupid thing to say. You know. So, so firstly. We don't pay them for their stupid opinion. And then secondly, it's just a stupid opinion. Uh, um, and I could see her partner was uh, was really embarrassed. So, um, yeah. <laughs> well, we had uh, Chief Wiggum say that uh, people's, or well, claim that people's uh, democratic rights and freedoms haven't been uh, infringed upon. He's, his words was, uh, you can be the keyboard warrior, say uh, all sorts of uh, unpleasant and, and, and uncharitable things and, and fat shame me all you like, but do it online. See how he chucked in that insult again, the keyboard warrior. That was to have a, another insult. You know, so he's trying to be nice and then he calls us all keyboard warriors. You know what I mean? He's a petty, petty, immature, pathetic man. You know what I mean? To stoop to that level. Well, I'm glad we haven't seen him since last Thursday when he was uh, defending the arrest of uh, Zoe uh, Bula. 
uh, who was the, the, the who in that uh, that sketch, uh, it was when you were you handcuffing uh, the, the, those children, you were satirizing the fact that she, a pregnant woman who wasn't going anywhere, was was handcuffed, which was probably the the aspect that disturbed most people. He said that if uh, if somebody's handcuffed during an arrest, they they're not uh, handcuffed that in entire time, but it was still caught on camera and he, well, at least he admitted that the optics were terrible. Yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, I, people were upset at me for not speaking out about that one. And I didn't speak out about it because the police didn't do anything wrong technically. So I wasn't going to sit there and bag the police cause they just, they didn't do anything wrong at all. So, um, it, it was, it was really non event, but if I was to say that I'd lose all my followers. So, um, because they were upset. But in saying that, Tim, in saying that, yeah, sure, the police followed the, the rule book 100%. They didn't do anything wrong. But in saying that, they had discretion available to them and they didn't choose to use it. They didn't need to handcuff her. They hang, they arrest people all the time without handcuffing them. And they also had could have arrested her by appointment, which means they could leave a calling card at her door or they could call her, contact her, and ask her to come to the police station that's being arrested by appointment. So they had those options. They didn't choose to take them. I don't know why. So that would have been nice if they'd done that. Um, would have been good for them if they just called her and told her to come in because then they wouldn't have got this bad press, this bad image for the police. So they probably should have done that. But, but yeah, th they didn't do anything. They hadn't done anything wrong. They, hadn't, they, they just followed the law. So... The, uh, the the secretary of the Victorian Police Association, Wayne Gatt, his uh, reasoning was when you go into a, a, a go and search someone's house, and obviously she was not known to police before. And as we well, they arrested her for organising that uh, anti-lockdown uh, protest in in Ballarat, and obviously some of these uh, uh, anti-lockdown uh, activists uh, they can get uh, quite aggressive and and conspiratorial remember the original uh, Karen from Bunnings with uh, her was it 1948 charter of of rights so you could say that they didn't know what they were walking into she could be one of those types of people which she clearly wasn't uh, that's no, that had, no well They'd already walked into it though. They had there was enough time from the time they were there to the time she put the handcuffs on to realise it wasn't that type of situation, wasn't it, Tim? Yes, yes. But so, look, the police are pretty they're pretty clever with their with their um, with their procedures. They like to go above and beyond, be be um, play it safe, rather be um, rather be safe than sorry. Mm. I mean, so they always use more measures than needed, and that's pretty clever. And uh, so, but I, I think that could have been one of the cases where they used their discretion. They didn't need to, they could have skipped the handcuffs, but uh, uh, it's not the end of the world. And they, they, they did have a search warrant, which is, is worth mentioning that under the, the state of disaster uh, declaration, police don't need a search warrant to enter a private premises but is that just to enter because they did seize phones and laptops and and out so they did confiscate things as as evidence which is that covered by a search warrant tim tim i'm gonna hold you right there you're gonna get me in trouble zara can you give me a hand please because <laughs> i'll make a fool of myself trying to try and explain that yes and um this is my friend Tim. Come sit in, sit in. Hi, Tim. Uh, hi, Zara. Uh, so we're talking about uh, search warrants. Do do they do they cover taking things out of the the home as as evidence, such as with Zoe Bula, her uh, phone and and laptop and what else? With a search warrant or without a search warrant? With a search warrant. Yes. Okay, that's what we were wanting to to clarify. Yeah. Well, we got it. Uh, now with this new uh, laws, do they, can they enter the house without a search warrant now? Yes, only under the state of emergency. Yeah, and what do they need any reason, reasonable grounds before they can do that? Yes. What are the What are they? They need reasonable grounds um, that they are in violation of one of the directions. Okay, so what does that mean for us in layman's terms? If they think there's 
10 people in a house having a barbecue, they can come in. They can come in. It's, it's the only way to enforce these kinds of rules. Otherwise, people would just not answer the door. Are you, are you talking about, you said state of emergency, because I was talking about the state of disaster, which has different powers. Uh, so, because I According to, uh, well, you're the lawyer here, the state of disaster, they can enter any premises without a warrant and also seize any property. I believe it also, it also applied under the state of emergency. Okay. So that sort of hysteria about uh, the state of disaster having extra powers, that was exaggerated in your view? Hugely exaggerated. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why so, that's why we defer to uh, Lance. Defer to you. Yeah. Well, see, there's always logic behind it. Usually, if you ask a lawyer, so it seems in this case, you know, if you're having a party, if the police didn't have those powers and you're having a party, they haven't got time to go and see a magistrate and get a warrant. No. So, so if they don't have those powers to enter when you're having a party, everyone would just have a party and not answer the door when the police are knocking, and that would be the end of it. Yeah. So, so there's always a reason behind it. Yeah. But while we've got the benefit of having Zara here. Um, what else did you want to ask me about? We're talking about it today. Um, you've you've roped her in uh, to this at last minute, not me. <laughs> so uh, that, that's why she's she's come over. Just for the record, Zara, this was not a planned ambush. So the fines, uh, so the lockdown fines, people are talking about. We actually can't with the crop. We can't see you uh, on the screen, Zara. There we go. Okay. So um, what do you call it? Uh, so people are all oh, debating online, Tim, uh, whether the um, whether the lockdown finds a, 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 con a contestable report. Yes, uh, and uh, well, I, I I know that you've got well a, a legal opinion of it on it. Uh, so yeah, you can ignore, ignore all the uh, people asserting constitutional rights and bill of rights and all, all the like. Uh, the law in Victoria is that these do apply. Um, all these laws have reasonable excuse as a lawful justification not to comply with them. Um, it's your obligation to tell the police that you have that lawful excuse at the time that they um, make the inquiry with you. Uh, because uh, I was trying to find the footage, uh, Jill Hennessy, the Attorney General, when uh, she was asked uh, by Liberal Democrat uh, David Limbrick about the contestability uh, of, the, of the fines, uh, she uh, hinted that uh, uh, they could be uh, con uh, contested. I'll have to. I haven't got it uh, in front of me. I'll have to go back uh, at another time to uh, look back at what she said uh, myself. They can be contested, not for constitutional grounds and not for bill of rights grounds. That all of these infringements have got reasonable excuse as an excuse for non-compliance. So obviously what mainly people have been talking about with regard to contesting or, and or especially the, the fact that protests are unlawful is the Victorian Charter of Human Rights and Responsibilities, which, and uh, I've heard the, uh, this is what uh, uh, Sa uh, 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 Gideon Rosner from the Institute of Public Affairs wants to uh, explore, but I do know that the state of disaster does have the it does give the well the police minister or emergency services minister, which is both Lisa Neville, the authority to suspend some rights. The Charter of Human Rights is um, solely in relation to the interpretation of legislation in the state. It isn't a charter standalone. So basically, whenever you're interpreting any other law that's created in the state, it has to be consistent with the charter. Um, so there's nothing contained within these lockdown restrictions which are inconsistent with the nature of the Charter. So that's your legal opinion of it? Opinion. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, that's all I... Uh, lawyers that are taking donations and taking money to fight these things in court, what do you think, why do you think they're doing that? Are they mistaken or are they ripping off people? Um, no doubt they've got genuine, genuine beliefs in relation to things, but whether or not they're correct or not is a completely different question. Yeah. Yeah. Well, come Over to time. you. All right. Nice to meet you, Tim. Nice to meet you too, Zara. Yes, uh, I haven't got any further for any more <laughs> further questions. I don't know if Lance wants to. It's up to Lance if he wants to rope you rope you in again. <laughs> that should get the news up, Tim. Yeah.
<laughs> oh, well, it's good that, uh, well, obviously you have uh, a decent uh, understanding of the law yourself, obviously, uh, going, uh, uh, going through the uh, criminal justice system and uh, police procedure uh, yourself, which does make you a legal, oh, could we call you a legal expert? No, and, no, no, wait, please don't say that. Okay. A, yeah. le not a le with legal knowledge. No, and what, and what my knowledge is in what I've learned, what I've learned is that it's so complex and you'd be nuts to try to understand them all because there's thousands of laws and they're all intertwined with each mm. other. You'll never understand them. Like, Tim, some lawyers don't understand the law. Oh, I know. And uh, we just have to go back to uh, the, uh, the dual what? citizenship crisis of, what was that, uh, 20, 2017, uh, where... All these constitutional experts had a view on what the High Court would decide about these dual citizens, and most of them were wrong. Yeah, well, there you go. There's a, there's a great example, Tim. So some lawyers don't understand the law, and then all us lay people are on the internet trying to trying to understand it lately. And my my advice is don't even bother. And uh, uh, but it's worth uh, looking it up yourself, going to the source. Uh, uh, please please don't uh, go by what the mainstream media tells you is it is the uh, the law because well I, uh, the journalists at the herald sun are not lawyers either no they're not no they're not so uh yeah okay so uh what do you call it it was probably too strong of words you're right we should we should try but i think put it this way tim we should have an open mind mm. open mind and be open to ideas mm. and different interpretations um you see like that lawyer serene she's just pumping out this information and confusing a lot of people and taking donations. Uh, so, so uh, well, I'll share her her website here. I know you've done a few uh, videos videos about her uh, proposed national class action challenging disproportionate response to SARS CoV two national state of emergency and Victorian state of disaster. I didn't know we had a national state of emergency i know that uh the federally uh the uh the health minister has invoked the the cyber security act which means that we're not well we're banned from leaving uh australia uh that's the uh the provisions that uh the federal government has invoked under the biosecurity act and i know that uh, she's talked about that as well and everything she says, she's, you know, she means well. She seems like a really nice lady, but she's just um, really mistaken. And she's going on every talk show on Facebook. And the, the people that have her on their talk shows on Facebook, they're going to be extremely embarrassed mm. um, in about 12 months. They're going to be very embarrassed for supporting her. Mm. And she, she d literally does not understand the law. And um, if you, all you got to do, all you got to do, all you got to do is show any one of her videos to any lawyer in australia and you'll be gobsmacked at what they say right and uh so she's she's just incorrect and almost every word of what she says is incorrect but to us lay people we don't she's the only lawyer speaking out she's the only yeah too. and she's using big words and she's got a law degree so we believe her right um and then people are saying to me why are you picking on her she's the only one speaking out and the reason why she's the only lawyer speaking out because there's nothing to speak out about if there was, if there was, you would have all the QCs would be coming out and speaking out, but they're not because there's nothing for a lawyer to speak out about. And then people get angry at me for saying that. What do you mean there's nothing to speak out about? Yeah, yeah of course. There's lots of things to speak out about, but nothing, nothing for a lawyer to come out on Facebook or on the news and talk about. Nothing technical, nothing legally for a lawyer to talk about right now. If there was, they would be. The only one stupid enough to speak out is Serene. And then she's being held as a hero. Mm. But people are going to be people that donated. They're going to be very disappointed. Uh, very what, what about? I'm not sure if you if you've made a vlog on on GNB lawyers. Uh, most of the the posts are made by the partner Nathan Buckley. He was the one who a, a declared that all Victorians could challenge the the mask mandate uh, fines. Uh, his biggest. Uh, a class action at the moment is the 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 no jab a well, no no job uh, p uh policy uh as he as he calls it well he's he's mainly uh doing a class action against the south australian government so no jab uh, no play 
policy? Have you explored uh, what he's been uh, okay. writing about online? Pretty big. Look, I've been a bit busy. I haven't got around to that one. I'm, I'm, I'm keen to, um, I'm keen to pull, pull their whole business apart and make them have to look stupid. Oh. And it's very easy. But I, I need, to, I need to get. The oh, then why did you pick on just Serene then? <laughs> um, well, she was the first one to come up, and then I seen GB step in, and I, I ran, I ran past some of their content, content past the uh, legal team. And they were in stitches laughing. I, I think they've been reported to the Legal Services Board. So they're, they're literally printing in misinformation, giving false false advice in the comments section. So they've been, I think a number of lawyers have reported them to the Legal Services Board. So um, I've got to do my homework before I start attacking them, mm. as I can't afford to be incorrect. But yeah, yeah. Another, it's another fast, it's another fast. I think they're even working with Serena, aren't they? Um, not to my knowledge. Uh, yeah. I see you that you've got a, a study uh, area which you, you do a few uh, vlogs at, and uh, I noticed that you do share that uh, uh, with Zara. One of our commenters said, is that Zara from Underbelly? No, it's not. That's uh, Zara from Underbelly is an actress, but <laughs> you two, you share the same uh, study space, and uh, <laughs> you've, you've disturbed her once so when she's trying to work. I disturb her a lot, so I pick her brain. <laughs> And uh, Australian Protectionist Party has said uh, Wilms Front on a Tuesday night. Yes, well, this show was going to be on on last night, and you had it on your your whiteboard uh, in the study, but you uh, forgot. Yeah, I got I've got a lot on my plate at the moment. I'm I'm struggling. With this um, uh, I got a, What do you call it? I've got the best memory, <laughs> and uh, that was pretty funny because. You rang, I spoke to you last night, you said, but you wrote it on your whiteboard. I said, yeah, but I'm in the car now. I don't have my whiteboard with me. <laughs> yeah. that, that's why, and I don't normally do this, uh, FYI, I gave you a few reminder calls uh, today. Uh, Thanks. 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 Now, uh, also another person that uh, you've well, hit out at is uh, uh, Mike Palmer from know your rights uh, which uh, he he's done a series of of vlogs about uh, the the his belief that uh, the laws uh, are invalid a lot of them are members of the the great australian party these are not his beliefs okay so this one okay so serene she's a nice lady she means well she's doing a lot of bad shit, but she means well she's a nice lady she's just a bit dull but this guy mike palmer he's the He's not trying to do anything good, yeah. Like he's a proper con artist, yeah. He's a proper, he's a proper. You see him that you'll see on a current affair being chased down the street. Okay, so he's a proper con artist, conning people out of this money at the moment. Um, couldn't believe it. And I put a quick video out, and I must have got so many. I don't know how many inboxes I got uh, from people that were about to buy his book, or had already bought his DVDs, or had bought his DVDs. So I've directed people to the appropriate. Um, uh, government agencies where you can make a complaint and hopefully they can retrieve their money. But uh, yeah, that guy, that's a proper con artist. And uh, just cashing in a Rona, which is, I, I think, despicable. You know, people are people are worried. People are, people are tinfoil hat wearing brigade are out there looking for answers. And then he's preying on those people with $280 uh, or whatever it was, $300 for his, for his DVD law books and, and whatnot, which are completely nonsensical. He's not a lawyer. He talks about having someone with 25 years experience in the legal industry, but if you look up that guy, he's just a fucking clerk. You know what I mean? So this guy, you know, this is a complete fast. Um, but unfortunately, um, so a lot of my followers inboxed me after I spoke out and said it was too late. They'd already bought his book. And I was like, oh, shit, I should have got onto that quicker. But um, I don't know, man, to, to, to cash in at this time, to cash in on people, I think it's a bit, um, It's a, I don't know, what is it, Tim? To... to what do you, what would you call that? Uh, it's not price gouging because that's when you raise the, the price of something during an uh, emergency. Yeah, it's, it's uh, uh, cashing it, as you said, cashing in uh, opportunistically, which, well, segues to a, a lot of the, uh, well, a couple of the, the new anti-lockdown activists, uh, Rafael Fernandez and James Bartolo, have, accu have been accused of being con men, uh, uh, exploiters, uh, Rafael Fernandez, because he was selling that uh, Shen guy, which, uh, according to his research, protects from uh, radiation 
waves, including 5G, and also both Raphael and James have uh, online courses uh, for sale as well, which is not, it's not related to law, but uh, I think Raphael's is life coaching and cryptocurrency, and uh, James is the, his is the conscious truth network where he has the the weekly weekly zoom sessions um i have a, a, a he he's also another one that uh, believes that uh, he knows the the uh, the law uh, in the same way that uh, mike palmer is and he uh, was uh, raided and arrested charged with incitement on friday morning and i might play just a a clip uh, of that because he is yeah <laughs> He, uh, we'll see what he said. They'll take you to court and you're going to lose. Look, look at that no trespassing sign, yeah? There's seven court case precedents from the Supreme and High Courts of Australia. You said you're coming down, you're not. Yeah, because I'm trying to talk to you first. You're not telling me what you're doing. Yeah, what's it? Search warrant for what? what? What gives you the authority to have a search warrant? Well, you do that. You know what? Leave my shit. Don't break my stuff, you fucking retard. Stop breaking my shit! Leave my shit! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Okay! Alright, stop! I'll stop! Okay! Alright! Okay, stop! I'm gonna put it! I'm gonna put it! You're losing! You're losing your hands behind your back! Now, with him uh, talking the way uh, he did, we can all agree that there was only one way that was going to end. Yeah. Yeah, he. There wasn't much other option. But, um, he got off. Look, I, I, I don't know this guy. He's, look, I'll tell you what, he seems like a nice guy. This guy, he seems like a nice person. I don't agree with most of what he says, but he seems like a nice person. He does he does say some things that um, that I that I like. But anyway, um, what do you call it? Uh, what people like him don't realise and people watching don't realise is um, he got off lightly. Us people that have dealt with the police, right, in our lives, that's getting off lightly. Having your door kicked in and then being put on the ground like that, he got up, you know, when he refused to open the door, he got up, let off lightly. And it's only because they know he's filming um, that he wasn't, yeah. he didn't have, you know, the police can be very, very, very violent people, you know, very, um, very violent people. And uh, when I say arrests like that, see, this is the thing, Tim, I'll put it this way. So all of his supporters go, look at how they handled it, you know, look at, and they're outraged, right? And all those people that have, that have been cr crooks or uh, crooks or whatever, um, we're laughing. We're like, that's nothing. We're getting bloody limbs broken and, 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 and black eyes and tortured and, and dunny brushes put up our bums. And, you know what I mean? So uh, the police can be extremely violent people. So when we see something like that, we're like, he got off pretty lightly. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He's and he had quite the nerve to sort of say, hey, don't break my shit, you fucking retards. I mean, he spoke to them like there was some sort of, like, vandals breaking in or some African gang. No, they're the police. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, if you're going to mouth with the police, you got to take... If you're going to mouth with the police and, and, and not open your door when they want, you, you have to take the... You have to accept what they're going to do in retaliation. Um, but what I'm saying is, the people that are in the know, he got off lightly. You know, he got off really... <laughs> He got off really lightly, you know, you know, police, you know, regularly um, hurt people, you know, physically hurt people in those situations. So he got off really lightly. <laughs> uh, now, he, uh, four hours after his uh, arrest, uh, charge, and he was granted bail, he was already doing uh, Facebook Lives again. Part of his bail is he can't talk about protests or the... Uh, coronavirus, uh, but he wasn't uh, gagged uh, before the the, the protest, uh, like uh, Fanos uh, Panias was and uh, Anthony uh, Kalouf. They were uh, arrested and charged for incitement on the Tuesday and weren't allowed to post until after Saturday, the the, the day of the the planned uh, protest. They're they're back uh, vlogging now, but they well, were told they weren't allowed to post until after after the fifth. All oh, right. Well, all right. so then oh, I'd like to hear what they got to say now. Uh, now they're all being charged, I'll be. I look forward to watching their videos. See what they got. What they what they got to say. And um, I wonder how much trouble they're in as well. I haven't really looked into that. The inciting of the, the riot. Oh, but, um, I'm not sure how much trouble. 
there was this uh, interesting uh, article, if I'll, if I'll bring it up, bring it up here, uh, on the, the, the conversation, uh, which is a, a academic uh, opinion website. You should be able to see this uh, here. But, uh, so, pre uh, the headline is, uh, protests have been uh, criminalized under COVID. What is incitement? How is it being used in the, uh, the, uh, the, the pandemic? And it goes through uh, the offense uh, of uh, incitement and then goes down here. What is significant about these charges? Application to incitement to protest is controversial. Firstly, incitement normally is linked to the commission of a serious crime, such as murder or assault. The act of protest is not of itself a crime. Secondly, breaching COVID restrictions and offence under public health legislation can each to the issuing of a fine. But charging someone with incitement makes this an offence under the Crimes Act. This can lead to much more serious punishment, such as imprisonment, and importantly, recording of a cr criminal conviction. The, uh, this may have serious consequences for a person's employment. And also goes down here, the very serious nature of a charge of incitement, very rarely being used in relation to protest. This is because normally protesting is not in itself a criminal offence. In extraordinary circumstances, pro protesting would be considered a crime if protesters damage pro property, commit trespass, or pose a threat uh, to public order. Oh, I should uh, also credit the author of this. It's uh, uh, Misha uh, Ketchell, uh, who is the editor of the conversation. Oh, well, good work, uh, Misha. So, uh, yeah, uh, what do you call it? So some people might not have realised that they were committing incitement, and then, but the law, you know, ignorance is no excuse, as you know, Tim. Yeah. But if, if ignorance is no excuse, I think it, I think it might have been, might have been nice if the... Uh, if the state government put some billboards and TV commercials and advised people of um, of what incitement entails, you know, because I think that lady, that pregnant lady, she committed incitement and she didn't even she genuinely didn't realise that she was breaking the law because it's a new law. So, so you're saying, you know, uh, <clears throat> ignorance is no excuse, but well, you should. It's a new law, so you can't be expected to be know be up to date with a new law. You know, um, so uh, this incitement. So maybe the government should have advertised it first. You know, maybe some TV commercials. Uh, as far as well, uh, Chief Wickham has said they're not seeking a term of imprisonment for these people charged, even though the legislation says they can be uh, imprisoned for four to fifteen years. They're seeking a penalty of up to a twenty thousand dollar fine. And so far in Victoria. Uh, we've, we've it, it's just been fines. There's never. Uh, he's talking about what he's seeking. He's not a judge. The, yeah. He's, he's seeking. They they can make suggestions. You know what I mean. But it, it, it's up to the it's up to the magistrate or a judge. So for him to you know to sit there and say oh, we're not seeking imprisonment, it's got nothing to do with you, you idiot. Hmm. You know what I mean. It, that's for the courts to handle. You know what I mean. So, so it's, that that will be dealt with with the court. So let's wait and see. Uh, there were, there's, uh, uh, it was reported that uh, a, a man had gotten 24 uh, COVID uh, breach fines in uh, well, Victoria. You said, Tim, you thought it was me. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, it was asked about in a press conference, like, will you consider jailing such people? And they haven't indicated uh, that uh, they're, they're not. But... Yeah, tw 24 fines, that's, uh, if you calculate it, that's at least uh, a or nearly uh, 50 grand. Yep. Wow. Okay, you bet my effort. <laughs> Uh, now, uh, obviously, we've we've seen a a lot of footage uh, from uh, Saturday's uh, protest uh, at the shrine and the uh, police uh, response. Probably, what was most, uh, I think, confronting was the, as I mentioned in my introduction, the the journalist uh, journalists who were intimidated. And Avi Yemeni has uh, released his video where he wasn't. Oh, they they would say Victoria Police. He wasn't arrested. He was detained. He had his uh, worker uh, uh, permitted worker papers with him for uh, Rebel News. Uh, he was warned uh, by police about what is it? Uh, 
abstract that he was obstructing their their efforts, and I think so was uh, uh, Paul Dowsley as well from from Channel Seven, and then he was also visit visited that evening by uh, police uh, as well, and. Uh, I, I just want to talk about uh, the, the, the fact today, um, I'm not sure if you've heard about uh, uh, the, the, uh, this, this story here, I'll bring it up here, a uh, Australian journalist arrived home after being rushed uh, out of China because uh, there were concerns for their safety uh, uh, after police demanded interviews uh, with, with uh, both men. And this is being shown as an example of uh, China's increasing uh, totalitarianism and uh, 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 aggression against uh, foreign journalists. And I've been seeing that today. Well, who are we to talk given uh, that we saw well, RV, Paul Dowsley, the Channel 9 uh, security guard, and also the Herald Sun photographer, they're basically uh, intimidated there. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit scary. Um, it, it, looked, it, appeared, it, appeared the, um, it appeared that RV's de being detained was unlawful. I hope he's gone and seen a lawyer, but that's, that, that, might, that may very well be unlawful. Um, if it wasn't unlawful, it was at least inappropriate mm. and unnecessary. I don't think any one rational person would agree with that. Not not required whatsoever to throw him on the ground, you know. So, you know, just like with the with the pregnant lady, there was no need to handcuff her, you know. So, I, I don't know what the police are thinking, but um, what do you call it? And then the other journalist as well. I, I didn't hear much about that, but. Um, it's not a, well here's the thing tim you know it's like look it's horrible to treat our media like that they're there to try to get the story they've got permits and they need to get us they need to inform us right mm. you need to inform the public what's going on it's an important job so to see the media be treated horribly you know like that by the police it's horrible but then tim we're also talking about the media the media <laughs> the media have done so many disgusting despicable acts to the public since the beginning of media began, you know, so, you know, it's hard to have much fucking sympathy. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a bloody media. They destroy lives. They lie on a constant basis. You know, so they sensationalize, they catastrophize the stories. They manipulate the public. The public believe them. You know, so, um, oh, so some, you know, the police gave them a little bit of a hard time. It, it, I'm, you know, I'm not going to lose any sleep over that. I'm not going to have... I'm not going to be uh, shed no tears for them. You know what I mean? But it's a, it's despicable, though. <laughs> you know that the police need to be that heavy-handed. It's unnecessary. So I don't know. I, I normally take that uh, point of view. Uh, I'm not sure if you remember last year, uh, the the mainstream media launched the uh, the Your Right to Know uh, campaign after Annika Smethurst got raided for violating national uh, security laws and they were campaigning for journalists to be exempt from national security laws when the rest of us are not and that uh, uh, concerned me because why should uh, a journalist in that situation get uh, extra rights and then of course who decides who's a journalist is it the government or who who get who gets to decide so in that uh Last year, I had no sympathy for uh, that campaign, though with this situation here, uh, when uh, all of our uh, liberties and freedoms have been severely restricted, I am a bit more, uh, more concerned this time if somebody like Paul Dowsley is being threatened with arrest and a Herald Sun photographer uh, is, uh, is detained by police. Yeah, yeah, well... It's a, it could be a slippery slope, couldn't it? Mm. Yeah, and we know that uh, when governments start uh, intimidating the, the big corporate media, we know that they fight back uh, viciously. I mean, they were able to defeat in one day the Queensland government's proposed law gagging them from reporting anti-corruption allegations into the lead-up to the Queensland state election. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, they do have a lot of power. <clears throat> they do have a lot of power and they abuse it too. <laughs> yeah, they, they can sometimes use it for good though as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, I think that's, 
we're better with them than without them. Yeah, them. and I'm glad that, well, uh, given that we are in still in this extraordinary situation in Victoria, they are starting to do their jobs a bit better now, if only they'd done that before. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't... No, I don't. Um, uh, I don't want to comment too much, too much on the um, on the media. At, uh, at, uh, I don't want to give them too much praise. I'm nervous to give them too much praise. I think uh, I think there's a lot of wrongdoing going on. A lot of they, uh, they're, they're the media are not the police. Uh, yeah, I should I should say to you, this yeah. is what I've uh, said to people when the mainstream media ask their que ask them questions. They're not police officers. You don't have to talk to the mainstream media uh, at all. Worst they're going to do to you is just manipulate your words and put you in an unflattering light. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, Tim. Yeah, that's right. And uh, what do you call it? Uh, most of the police are good people. Most of them are friendly. Most of them are good. You get you get some dickheads. The thing is, it's human beings. You know what I mean. It's run by human beings. So mm. <laughs> uh, now, I just want to run you through uh, this uh, theory that uh, was was put forward. Uh, I've got it, uh, got it here. I'll just make sure I'm putting the the right one up here. Uh, John McCauley, uh, who I've had on this show previously, he's a friend of, of Cardinal uh, George Pell, who was recently exonerated from uh, his child abuse conviction uh, by the, the High Court. Uh, he sat in on the uh, two uh, suppressed uh, county court trials here in Victoria, which uh, found him, him guilty. This is what uh, he wrote. Uh, to cover up breaking news of the Lawyer X scandal three years ago, uh, Victorian police announced the imminent arrest of Cardinal Pell so that the media's attention was successfully distracted from the fact that a state serving senior police commissioners had bribed a lawyer, a governor's niece, to rat on her clients. Two days ago, a Royal Commission into the matter published damning findings against Victoria Police. But Vola, like clockwork, the story has been strategically buried once again by the police choosing Wednesday and today to make more dramatic and outrageous arrests. So why did Commissioner Luke Cornelius apologise yesterday for the bad optics of arresting a pregnant woman near PJs, given it was always about optics and never about prudent policing? In case you missed it, here's today's latest instalment of them arresting an army veteran because James Bartolo has been in the Defence Force around 8am in Melbourne despite only presenting a warrant to search his home. So what do you make of, of John's theory? Well, that's a lot there. You, have to, you put me on the spot. Mm. Yeah, um, I don't know. You'll have to send that to me. Yeah, because the, it was last Tuesday night when the, was it the, the Royal Commission into a police informants, I'm not sure if it's that's its, its official name, into the Lawyer X informer 3838 uh, uh, Nicola Gobbo, a 2,000-page uh, report was uh, released uh, from that uh, uh, commission. It was around about news time on last Tuesday evening. And a lot of, well, a lot of the names were uh, redacted, but certainly the, the release of the of the document was uh, damaging in itself it towards who towards uh victoria police given that uh so <clears throat> it's a bloody big scandal it's not this is not recorded to have happened anywhere in the world mm. it's a big it's a big scandal but uh it's it's uh, far from over we have to wait and see the outcome so far it's been very good we've had a royal commission um royal commission have done a great job uh, we have to wait to see if there's how many prosecutions there are if they're successful we've still got to wait but so far it's great maybe we can restore a little bit of faith mm. back into the police force yeah. um, uh, did you ever meet nicola gobbo uh, i seen her in court uh, in a lift once but no i don't know i never yeah. met her because i remember what is that because uh, i've been watching uh, binge watching a bit of uh Lawyer X uh, documentary. They've already made an, an underbelly mini series uh, about it, uh, which was uh, released at the at the beginning of the uh, of, of this year. That garbage fool. Sorry. Sorry. That garbage. Tim, I thought you were a smart guy. Look, if you if you if you need entertainment, um, 
Tim. I suggest you go and check out Loki and Lance on Facebook, <laughs> and it's all the entertainment that you need. Uh, I know it's a it's a a, a fictionalized dramatization based on real events uh this is i noticed because uh, i was watching was it mrs america recently and they uh, they have this disclaimer at the beginning and yes some of the characters are fictional and some of the dialogue has been made up as well so admission that we made maybe 50 percent plus of it all up yeah, mm. I, I don't give you 50%, but yeah. yeah. Well, I've, uh, given that uh, the Unshackled and uh, myself have, have covered a lot of the, the Patriot uh, activism over the, over the last few years, I know uh, from watching Romper Stomper, the, the miniseries, which is uh, a continuation of the, the movie, but with, with new characters, just how fictionalized uh, that was uh, as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, so you uh, back to you. Uh, yeah, the, 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 we're going back to well, the actual news reports on uh, 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 Lawyer X. There's been a, a Four Corners episode. There's also been that uh, Sky News series. They always mention the uh, the uh, Nicola Gobba and your and your wife uh, Zara as the two main gangland uh, lawyers. Uh, she, I think, she was interviewed for the the the, the Four Corners one um yeah. and yeah it's it's quite an extraordinary uh tale and obviously uh simon overland the former uh chief commissioner under john brumby he was he was overseeing piranha at the time the task force and former uh chief commissioner graham ashton he oversaw the office of police integrity at that uh, time he's uh, recently uh retired so two pretty bitty pretty big names in Victorian policing. Oh, yeah. And you, you have to wonder, you know, you have to wonder if the, if the parliament what had no idea about their dealings. They kept it quiet, you know, when they, they have, you know, with the government. So you have to wonder about that. Mm. But um, what do you call it? We have to wait and see. You know, I'm pretty sure, I mean, this, this Royal Commission is great. You can restore faith back in the police system for everybody in Victoria. A lot of people think the police are corrupt. And, um, you know, this should restore some faith. That's if we see some prosecutions. I mean, if Simon Overland and Christine Nixon and a few other people, if they're not in jail after all this, well, then we'll have no reason to have any faith in the integrity of the Victoria Police and the and the millions of dollars on the Royal Commission would have been a waste of money. So if we don't see a heap of cops going to jail and Gobbo going to jail, then, Tim, then you'll know the system is corrupt to the core, Tim. If we don't see a number of police in jail for the crimes that have so blatantly been you know exposed in the royal commission if we don't see actual prosecutions and police going to jail for this and people like overland doing lengthy jail terms um if you don't see that tim then i advise stop following the law <laughs> we'll just we'll become criminals tim because we will have we have no reason to respect the law well if john Mac uh, macaulay's theory is correct that these incitement arrests were to distract from uh, the the lawyer X uh, uh, report released, then it clearly didn't work because the result of this is people have been making lots of lawyer X a, a, a well a linking a Victoria uh, uh, current Victoria police officers to uh, lawyer X and Cadillacy Files. Uh, I'm not sure if you've ever come across that blog. It's run by. It's been very hard to believe that the police. To distract from some some fine yeah I yeah I yeah I I, I, I I agree but I I just want to get to get get to this um, yeah. uh, I'll bring it up here this was by Sinclair Sinclair Davidson here who uh, points out that uh, the search warrant for for Zoe uh, was written by Detective Senior Sergeant Tim Argyll and he uh, told the uh, the Royal uh, Royal Commission into police informants that he sought legal advice from uh, Miss Gobbo when a friend of his drug squad uh, detective Paul Dale was charged with the burglary of a of a drug house uh, in Oakley and that was the one that a uh, well, Terence Hodson uh, broke into who he and his wife were uh, later uh, murdered so I obviously I don't think Sinclair Davis is implying uh, anything there but just sort of making the 
the the link there what do you what well, well, what's your i i messaged you that and you said it doesn't discount the fact that the uh, the, the warrant was lawfully executed yeah it sounds like a it just sounds like a bloody big coincidence you know what i mean i mean what, uh, if it's not a coincidence what what is it if that's not a coincidence then what is it tim you know yeah but uh, he wasn't and I, I noticed i noticed that a few of the more conspiratorial people said hey the the officer who was there he doesn't look like uh uh, uh tim argall and no he wasn't there he signed the uh the warrant and they also have made the case that one of the bald cops who was there he was the same guy who choked uh, that woman who was not wearing a mask and also was there when james bartolo got got raided and there's a lot a lot of cops look the same a lot of them do look bald yeah i think these people are being racist saying that these balding older australian men all look the same mm. yeah. <laughs> well what's the what's the old stereotype that uh, police uh, officers and the the commissioners and that they always have their the jet black hair and have the thick mo that's always the stereotype that's right but in terms of this guy um this copper being connected with paul dale hundreds of police would have been connected with paul dale do you know what i mean and um it was a it was it was an organized criminal within the police force you know what i mean he would have met he probably would have met a thousand police officers and worked with hundreds mm. of them so that that could easily be a coincidence um and um you know uh, what to think that he deliberately went to arrest this lady to yeah findings from the commission well, the reason why that's absurd is the, the findings from the commission and the outcome from the commission are going to be made public and everyone's going to know about it and there'll be no amount of distracting anybody that will that'll be um successful it's a worldwide huge story biggest story in criminal history in in in, in australia's history not recorded to have happened anywhere in the world it'll be worldwide news and so there'll be no no efforts by some cop arresting some woman to distract people it would be that would be a, a piss in the ocean, you know what I mean? Mm. So, it's a, so I'd say I put that down to myth. I might do a segment on that myth. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, as, well, as we've been talking about all all, all night, the uh, this year has been a well, it's a, a haven for conspiracy theorists because a lot of people just don't know what to believe anymore. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Mm. It's hard. I've, I get confused all the time myself, Tim. You know, I I watch, um, you know, I watch some content from from. Um, or sometimes it's from Dan or someone or someone in the media, and I think, wow, that fucking makes a lot of sense. Mm. And show it to an academic, and they just pull it apart word for word, and I go, shit. You know, how are those lay people meant to know what's <laughs> what the truth is? And then you got these conspiracy guys running around, confusing us further. And message gets lost, you know, because there is been some doctors around the world that have come out and given us some good information that had been had been the opposite of what the mainstream are telling us, and it's like they were respected doctors, um, but their message is lost. Usually, the content is taken straight off the internet anyway. So they don't toe the line, but uh, but uh, I think I think some doctors met, doctors that do speak out, their message could be lost. They could be put in the same bracket as the uh, Tim Paul hat wearing brigade. That sucks. What do you know about that? Didn't um, 100 doctors or something today write a letter to the Premier? Was it 500 doctors? Yes, uh, that the, the lockdowns will do more harm than, than good in terms of, of mental health. Apparently, I haven't uh, verified this uh, myself, but apparently there was that uh, COVID Doctors Network, the website was taken down by, by Wix, which has sent people into a tailspin. I'm not sure what's 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 up with that but of course if a website goes down like that then people reckon that there's been some sinister takedown order of it wow so you're saying the doctors the site the doctors were using has been taken down oh, why don't we go to it now wow if i get well it's conspiracy theorists tim <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll look up to save it now COVID doctors Oh, here it is here. Oh, here it is here. Yeah, I'll share. I'll share it on the screen for uh, for everyone. 
uh, this is what the, the, the site looks like now. Looks like this domain isn't connected to a website yet. Is this your domain? This is coviddoctorsnetwork.com. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. So that yeah, well, it could be just a, maybe they, because obviously running the Unshackled, I've learned just how complex web management is, especially when your website grows and there's so many different uh, different variables could that can mess mess something up uh yeah you you do think like uh, obviously in my line of work you do get paranoid uh but uh, often it's because there's there's some uh, there, 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 there's some sort of uh, mismatch in all of the coding or the server and 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 whatever that's why in that situation you defer to the experts because i'm never going to understand it <laughs> I don't know. I don't make, I don't want to comment. Let's, but keep me up to date. Let tell me how it goes in a few, you know, in the in the future, Tim, when it comes back up. But um, I don't want to call it a conspiracy nut, but it does sound fucking suspicious, Tim. <laughs> it's a bit suspicious. Yeah, I'll see if what is it? It's um, Change Victoria. I'll see if that website is still up. That's uh, the 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 hospitality campaign to to reopen uh, bars. Uh, bar, uh, bar, bars and restaurants that's fronted by Paul Paul De Martina, uh the the ex uh, footballer. Oh, this website is is still up here, and they've got their petition there. Yeah, so their uh, yeah their website is still up there, and so I don't know if it was some a you know coordinated campaign, then why didn't they take down that website as well? Yeah, good point. <laughs> Uh, now, uh, as I as I said, uh, you're a source of of light relief during this uh, uncertain uh, time, and so is Karen from Brighton, and also uh, Tim uh, Penaholarak. I think that's how you say his name. There, the Dan Andrews uh, impersonator who's gone viral, who satirizes Dan's press conferences. He, uh, I, I, I said to him, you do it well enough that it's funny, uh, but it doesn't disturb me as much as the real thing, which is just the right balance. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's funny. Mm. You usually, have to, usually you have to exaggerate someone's character greatly. Exaggerate it. In this case, you don't even need to. <laughs> mm. <laughs> uh, now you've also got another Facebook page, uh, Lucky Lance for Senate, because you're considering a, a Senate run at the the next election, and I. Uh, I've asked you already about uh, whether you'd be constitutionally eligible given your uh, oh. uh, uh, previous life of life of crime. Uh, um, what do you call it? Jeez, uh, life of crime. I never heard it called that. Oh. <laughs> previous life of crime. No, even I, I never thought of it like that. Life of crime. At, uh, but anyway, um, what do you call it? Uh, so you gave me a bit of a scare today, you were suggesting I wasn't. Uh, se se section forty four of the of the the, the constitution. Um, I'll, I'll I'll bring it up here. Yeah, now I'm uh, I'm schooling you on. Well, uh, obviously, a covering and previously participating uh, in elections, I've become familiar with uh, eligibility and uh, electoral law. Even though, obviously, if, if I, I'm not a lawyer, we've heard from. I'd like you to, um, I'd like you to uh, maybe take that the wing. So I got a tutor. I just did my first lesson. I'm starting to learn about how the Senate operates. And the thing is, even if I'm not ineligible, it's a, it's a, I think it's something I need to learn anyway. Mm. So I won't, I won't regret mm. spending the money on a tutor. Um, I think we should all know about it, really, because we vote, and then we don't really know what we're voting for. So, so I'm, 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 I'm happy to learn about the Senate. It's exciting. Mm. Uh, I, my wife looked it up tonight after I spoke to you because you got me worried and she said, no, you're eligible for some reason. Um, I hope she's right. And um, what do you call it? And then I, what do you call it? So I'm doing lessons, but I need to take the first step. Like Tim, I, I literally don't know what I'm doing. And uh, how much would I have to pay a Tim for you to be my campaign manager to oh. do the paperwork? Mm. Uh, I'll have to, I'll have to consider what my fee shall be. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll get back to you and give you a quote. 
Okay, let me know, Tim. I, I, um, I, I did find a guy who's got like five degrees or something, one of these geniuses, but he won't do it for free, mm. so I haven't employed him yet. He's, he's done it before. He's done it before, so I need, I need someone, an academic, yeah. to take under the wing a little bit. Yeah. I think it'll be um, a good message right. of redemption to show people in the community that you can achieve anything if you, if you redeem yourself and become a good person. You can, you can attempt anything, you can achieve anything. So it's a good story of redemption. So I'll yeah. just go through, I'll just read it out just for the audience uh, section. This is section 44, who's disqualified for running for parliament, is uh, is attained of uh, treason. Uh, you haven't been convicted of, of treason. Or has been um, convicted as, and is under sentence or subjected to be sentenced for any offence punishable under the law of the Commonwealth or a state by imprisonment of one year or longer. Uh, or is a undischarged bankrupt or insolvent, and then the office profit under the uh, the crown. So uh, the the long interpretation of this, even if you haven't been sentenced to imprisonment for over a year, if the crime that you've been convicted of carries a maximum sentence of more than twelve months, you're still disqualified. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't, I don't know your full. Uh, a, you know, rap, a rap sheet. I'm not. Uh, I'm not asking you to read it out on, on on air, but that's just the information. What's that website you were on? Uh, that's the uh, Oz 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 uh, oh, I'll spell it out. Oz A U S uh, T L I dot E D U dot A U. That's uh, that's uh, got all the legislation that's throughout Australia, every state territory federal law i didn't get that can you text that to me later yeah well thanks tim <laughs> i'm like your ba ba your researcher as well thanks tim thanks tim thanks very much yeah also thanks again for for joining me uh tonight i'm glad we could do this uh a uh, bit more of a a, a exploratorial uh, episode about your your whole self and profile and yeah we even got to meet zara as well yeah, thanks, mate. I enjoyed talking to you. I, I, I enjoyed that. Thank you for your time, and um, uh, and, and I'll be in touch. Okay. Yeah, and everyone, uh, stay, uh, 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 stay sane. A, a, it will uh, get better. I know that that's a, a, a cliche, uh, but it's true. It is true. Yeah. It is true. Yeah. Thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in to Wilmsfront. Visit timwilms.com or Rational Rise TV to view the archive of episodes. And keep visiting theunshackled.net to view all our shows. And to keep up with the latest real news and analysis.